Let's do a quick recap of our previous chapter. Earlier, when we were doing performance evaluation, we looked at static budget, again, which was called the master budget. Then we flexed our volume. We prepared a flexible budget to reflect actual volume. So the flexible budget is a budget with actual volume. And then we had actual numbers on the leftmost side. The difference between your static budget and flexible budget was called the volume variance. And the difference between your flexible budget and the actual was called the flexible budget variance. What we're going to do next is split the flexible budget variance into further variances. And we will be doing this for direct materials, direct labor, and variable manufacturing overhead. So keep in mind we only do this for direct materials, direct labor, and variable manufacturing overhead. We do not split the flexible budget variance for fixed manufacturing overhead. A quick reminder, remember the flexible budget reflects the total cost of what should have been incurred given the actual volume achieved. So the flexible budget is a budget where we reflect the total cost it should have been for the actual volume that was produced. We'll start with the direct material variances. The direct material variances split your flexible budget variance into two components, the price variance and the quantity variance. The only time that the price variance plus quantity variance equals your flexible budget variance for direct materials is if the amount of materials you purchase is the same as the amount of materials that you use. So in other words, if there's no inventory, you use up everything that you purchase, you can use this particular methodology. When the amount you purchase is different from what you use, so you have some ending inventory, the price variance plus your quantity variance will not equal your flexible budget variance. You will still calculate a price variance and a quantity variance, but they just won't total up your flexible budget variance. The direct material price variance calculates how much of the total variance is due to paying a higher or a lower price than you expected to pay for the direct materials that you purchased. If you remember, when we calculate the standard cost of a Starbucks cup of coffee, we said we expected to pay seven cents for the two teaspoons of standard quantity required. However, let's say that um, because of general conditions that the price of coffee had gone up and Starbucks was not able to purchase the coffee at the prices they had budgeted. Let's say in the end we ended up paying nine cents for those two teaspoons that we use that would be reflected in your direct material price variance because we ended up paying a higher price than we expected when we were preparing our budgets. The next variance is the direct material quantity variance. The quantity variance measures how much of the total variance is due to using a larger or a smaller quantity of direct materials than expected. Going back to that same example of the Starbucks cup of coffee, we anticipated using two teaspoons of coffee per cup. But let's say that the person who was preparing uh, the cup of coffee happened to drop one teaspoon on the floor as he was preparing the coffee. So now, how much coffee did we use for that one cup of coffee? We used three teaspoons. We used a larger quantity than we ant anticipated when we were preparing our budget. That would be reflected in the direct material quantity variance. We'll take a look at how to calculate these two variances next. The way that I'm going to show you how to calculate these variances is very different from what is shown in the book. The book gives you formulas how to calculate all of these variances. My method is the same, uses the same formulas. However, it's more visual method and I don't use formulas. I just explain how it's done. So you are welcome to use whichever method you are comfortable with. However, Use one method and stick to it. If you are going to use your formulas, make sure you write these formulas and bring them to class and also write those formulas on your index card that you will bring for the final exam because you will need them. There are quite a few formulas. If you're going to use the method that I will show you, stick to that method. Both methods end up giving you the same answer. We're going to use this question to calculate our direct material variances. 
This question says, what is the material price variance? But I will show you how to calculate the price as well as the quantity variance. Pause this video, read the question, and then we'll continue in a minute. Whenever you're calculating direct material variances, the very first thing you always, always, always have to do is to see whether the quantity of materials purchased and used are the same. If they're the same, you use one method, and if they're different, you use another method. We're going to talk about how to calculate direct material variances if the amount purchased and used is the same. So here, I've underlined it, we see that the amount of raw materials purchased and used were 1,000 pounds. They are the same, so now we can go ahead and calculate our variances. The format that we're going to use is the same format you will use to calculate your direct material variances, direct labor variances, and variable manufacturing overhead variances. You're going to set up every time you calculate a problem, you're going to set it up this way. On the right hand side, you will have your standard quantity and your standard price. In the middle, middle column, you will have your actual quantity and standard price. And then in your leftmost column, you will have your actual quantity and actual price. If you remember these three columns, you pretty much got down your direct material variances direct labor variances and your manufacturing overhead variances. You don't have to remember anything else but just these three columns and then you apply the knowledge that you know. Again, on the left hand side it's standard by standard. On the middle column you flex the quantity so you've got actual quantity this time to reflect your actual quantity that you ended up buying multiplied by the standard price and then on the leftmost column you have actual quantity times actual price. Now we're going to go ahead and put down numbers. What was the standard quantity allowed for our production? They said that the standard quantity allowed was 900 and the standard price was $10. Therefore your standard cost is $9,000. Now we're going to flex. We're going to flex this quantity to reflect the actual quantity. So what was the actual quantity that we ended up purchasing and using? They said the actual quantity was 1,000 pounds. So we take 1,000 pounds, but remember we still have to stick with our standard price. Our standard price was $10. Therefore, this number is equal to 10,000. And then finally we've got our actual quantity times actual price. Our actual quantity was 1,000 pounds. Actual price was 9.6, giving you $9,600. Now that you got these three numbers, you can calculate your quantity variance and your price variance. Your quantity variance is the one on the right-hand side. We have a variance of $1,000. Is it favorable or unfavorable? This is a direct material variance. A direct material is a cost and our standard cost was 9000 We expected $9,000 but it actually ended up being 10000 Therefore, this $1,000 is an unfavorable variance. This variance that you just calculated is the quantity variance. It's a direct material quantity variance. Next, let's take a look at the price variance. Our variance here is $400. Is it favorable or unfavorable? Again, it is a cost variance, direct material cost. We expected it to be 10,000 and we ended up being an actual, paying an actual cost of 9,600 less than we expected. So therefore, this one is a favorable variance. This is our price variance. Remember when the quantity purchased is the same as the quantity used, you can add up your price variance and your quantity variance and that will give you your flexible budget variance. In this case, your flexible budget variance is $600 unfavorable. You had 1000 unfavorable, 400 favorable, you add the two up, it's 600 You're actually not adding it, you're subtracting 400 from 1000 Another way of doing it is look at the difference. 9,000 is what we expected or what was our standard cost. Our actual was 9,600. The difference is 600 unfavorable. 
Next, let's calculate the direct material variances when the quantity purchased and the quantity of direct material used are different. We're going to use this question to calculate our direct material variances. Again, the very first thing you always need to look for is whether the quantity of direct materials purchased is different from quantity of direct materials used. Here we do see that the direct materials purchased was 40,000 pounds, however direct materials used was 35,000 pounds. So we cannot use the approach that I showed you in the last question. You're going to start by setting up the questions the same way as before. So on your right hand side you'll have standard quantity times standard price. You're going to have actual quantity times actual price on your right hand side and then in the middle you will have your actual quantity at standard price. Remember we always only flex our quantity just like when we did a flexible budget we calculated a flexible budget for actual quantity here we are only changing the quantity portion so you do need to remember that the price will stay the same for both these columns. Now we use this when the direct materials purchased and used were the same, but when they're not the same, we have to make a small adjustment. The middle column, you're going to have two middle columns. One, you're going to have actual quantity used, and then you're going to do another calculation for actual quantity purchased multiplied by the standard price. That's the only difference that you're going to do. And now we can fill in our numbers here. All the numbers you need were given in the data table. So let's look at the standard quantity. The standard quantity that you need was 10 pounds. However, that 10 pounds was for one unit. How many did we have? We produced 4,500 units. Therefore, your standard quantity is 4,500 times 10 pounds. Let's look at your standard price. Your standard price was 75 cents per pound, which gave you your standard cost for the 4,500 units to be 33,750. The 33,750 is a standard cost of our direct materials. Next, let's take a look at how much is actually used. They told you that we used 35,000 pounds. So we put that number under actual quantity used. We don't need to make any calculations because they've already told us the total number of pounds that they used. And then you just multiply that by the standard price of 75 cents giving you 26,250. Now you have the two numbers that you need to calculate your direct materials quantity variance. The quantity variance is 7,500 is it favorable or unfavorable? Let's take a look at it. We expected to have 33,750. Our actual cost was 26,250 less. Therefore, it is a favorable variance. And I said this is your direct material quantity variance. Let's calculate your direct material price variance next. We'll start with the actual numbers. They told you that your actual quantity of direct materials used was 40,000 pounds. The actual price that they paid was 85 cents per pound, giving you a total of $34,000. Now let's move on to the middle column, which we are going to calculate right here at the bottom. Actual quantity purchased again was 40,000 pounds. We purchased 40,000 pounds. However, the standard price is 75 cents, therefore it gives you $30,000 as your total. Now you can look at the difference and that will give you your price variance. The price variance is $4,000. Is it favorable or unfavorable? Again, whenever you're calculating it, you look at your, you move from your right to your left. 30000 was what we expected. We ended up paying 34000 Therefore, it's a 4000 unfavorable variance. Remember, in this case, your price variance plus your quantity variance does not equal your flexible budget variance and that is because the quantity of materials purchased and used are different.